Welcome to the Magnetic Online Leaders Podcast, where we explore the journey of entrepreneurship and navigating the ups and downs of business and life. I am your host, Steffi Lane, and I'm thrilled to have a special guest, Lauren Page. Lauren is a transformational life and sales coach who specializes in guiding creative women entrepreneurs to achieve balance between their art, business, and personal lives. She is a published author, a successful wellness entrepreneur, and has an incredible story of resilience and reinvention. Oh my gosh, this girl can reinvent herself. From surviving Hurricane Katrina to building and selling a Pilates studio, experiencing financial highs and lows, and now as a thriving coach living in San Diego, mother of twins, Lauren has been through it all. Her journey is such a testament to her power of perseverance, adaptability, and staying true to her creative spirit. In this episode, Lauren and I talk about major life transitions, how she helps entrepreneurs find harmony between creativity and business, and how the unexpected ways of motherhood has enhanced her sense of purpose, groundedness, and productivity. So if you are a creative entrepreneur looking to level up your business, understand that we all have the highs and lows, change, transformation, evolution, up levels, then this is the podcast episode for you. So let's stay grounded (laughs) and let's jump into this conversation with the most beautiful Lauren Page. Hello, my love. I'm so thrilled to be here with you, Steffi Lane. It's good to see you. Oh, my goodness. We've known each other since, what, 2015? Yeah, I was going to say it's been like eight or nine years. That's a long time. You were one of the first people I really met when I moved to San Diego. Mm. First little cluster of peeps. I met your husband first. Mm -hmm. Yep, through a mutual friend. And then you were like, I should totally be friends with her. And he was like, "Um, maybe we'll because we both were connected in the fitness space at the time many moons ago mm-hmm. and I was like I think we'd be great friends you're like mm, maybe you should not stop her I think he was more looking out for your greater good potentially oh really okay who knows well we did become amazing friends we didn't start off really hot in the beginning like I think sometimes which I think is good sometimes some friendships I didn't say like not like we didn't not like each other but some friendships are like so intense yeah in the beginning I felt like ours was a slow sizzle. Yeah. 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 And now it's burning hot, hot flames. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like your blazer that you're wearing right That's now. That's right. Red so the red reason red. that I brought Lauren on this podcast was Lauren is one of those people that has been through many iterations, many chapters, many life paths from Pilates to actress to coach to like you I'm I'm sure I'm leaving a ton in between but you've had lots of iterations and somewhat of like a chameleon but not really like you have these rebirths you have these deaths and you've changed a lot even in those eight years you have changed significantly I remember you having like a really really bright spray tan when I met you oh good god of course I did of course I did like I mean, someone, I mean, sure, people probably did tell me, but they were like, "Sis, you should lay off or that." <laughs> well, I mean, I I noticed. So I was like, "Dude, that tan is bright," it is... <laughs> but it's all good. Well, tell us uh, before we go like into like your history and everything. The reason I want to talk about magnetism and change is because I don't even feel like you've gone through phases. I feel like you've gone through different versions of yourself. Mm-hmm. And like from like divorce to not wanting to have kids to having kids, like it's crazy how much you change. Mm -hmm. Give me like the, give me like the eagle eye. I am not. I wouldn't even say eagle eye, but give me like the zoomed out version of like 40,000 square foot above the clouds version. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. And if we talk about two in terms of magnetism, when I've been following you and your podcast and I was like, oh, I don't think I have anything to offer in terms of magnetism because my initial standpoint was magnetism is like bright and shiny and like pulling people in and like being very attractive. And I don't mean by the physical sense, but like just attracting energy in. 
And the more I thought about our time together today, I almost likened it to like the actual magnetic pull, like here on earth. And I feel really fortunate that, <laughs> I don't know if fortunate's the word, but I'm just one of those people who is built for change. Like I just know that this time around, how I showed up at earth school, there was going to be a lot of adaptability. I grew up moving around a lot. So I feel like it's just kind of built into my blueprint. But with that said, it's still hard. It doesn't mean it's any easier for me than it would be for somebody else. And if we kind of look at the different progressions, yes, there have been different business iterations through the years. But one of the things you just touched on with motherhood, which was really interesting because I, I would speculate some of your listeners or viewers are people that have been in maybe say like the spiritual space at some point in time or entrepreneur entrepreneurship where in so many ways, like our heads kind of are off in the clouds. You kind of have to be a little delumu, if you will, mm -hmm. to get, get the ball rolling, whether it's in business or if you are in that spiritual space. And I found that this most recent iteration of motherhood was wanting to truly participate in the human experience. And so there was nothing more initiating than being grounded magnetically here on earth than in this newest chapter of motherhood. Because you have to be really present. If you, I, I happen to have a set of two-year-old twins, you have to be really freaking present if you have two little human bodies that are looking up at you like, please provide for my every need. Mm -hmm. So I think all the different transformations, if you will, kind of have led me here. So if we zoom out to the big picture, it's like all those freaking cliches are true about you can't connect the dots backwards. And what I would say is not any of these big changes have felt big at the time because you truly just wake up each day and you're like, I am just doing the very best that I can with the information that I have today, mm. with the skills that I have, with the tools that I have, with the information that I have, what is the very next best thing? that I can do today. So it sounds like it comes from a place of groundedness and a decision to be like, I want to be having this human experience. Yeah. But when I, okay, when people like, when I look at you and see, look, look at you from an earthly perspective. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like a very grounded person mm -hmm. and you look like a very grounded person, but you have this artistry about you, this creativity, this colorfulness. You go to Burning Man every August yeah. with your partner. <laughs> but you do. Yeah. That says a lot, right? That says a so, lot. It, a lot. It, it is what it is. Just <laughs> Burning Man. I would never go to Burning Man, but you, you say that and you're like, okay. What is that identity or how can, my question is like, how can two identities happen at the same time? Ooh, yeah. Maybe this is the Libra in me, right? Like the scales. So I do think that's an element. The the playful element, honestly, has only resurfaced the past, I don't know, five years. I grew up a theater kid, so there is that. Like I was in, like I did plays and I acted and I was a theater major in college. But then as soon as I I hung up that hat, if you will, and I went back to school for nutrition and dietetics and all everything, all wellness and all of that business trajectory, for that whole entire decade, I really like I was in major I, I was dealing a lot with financial scarcity, very much like I just truly have to make a business work. I've got to make a paycheck. I've got to bring in income. And there is zero time and space for anything frivolous. Like if you had said like, why don't you go do an adult coloring book or a meditation? I would be like, you are crazy. I have to find a way to move the business forward. And it wasn't until my mom unexpectedly passed away five years ago from a heart attack and she was very creative. And I got, I met Jake shortly thereafter who really brings out that side of me, which I'm it's really been grateful five years for. since you met Jake. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Sorry. I'd be a little bit longer. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Five, five and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, when he first said he went to Burning Man, I was like, oh my God, he's such a druggie. Like that was my initial standpoint. Cause that's all I thought Burning Man was not that it's like this beautiful art installation in the middle of the desert. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I remember he said, when you go to Burning Man, everyone rides bicycles around. And if, if you want, you can decorate your bicycle. But at the very least, it needs to have lights on it because it's the safety hazard at night. 
And Steffi, I don't know what happened, but I, once again, like I was living by myself. I had gone through a divorce a couple of years earlier. So I was financially wrecked and I had no business, quote unquote, taking time off. And I spent two days and I just went into this trance where I decorated this bicycle like it was my job. And I truly felt like it was some sort of divine intervention, call it like my mom at that the point, muse. the muse, right? Whatever everyone's kind of like inkling is. And it really just kind of peeked open the door. So I always love to encourage people, like if there's something that you you like to do, something that brings you flow state, like just kind of keep that that door cracked a little bit and see where you can squeeze it in. Mm. One of the one of the common um the common directives people will say is like, what did you like to do when you were five? I don't know about you, but like, I don't really remember. Like, I wasn't really the kid that I was like, oh, I just love to dance all the ra- all the time or paint. Like, that wasn't necessarily my thing. Um, I really love to find out how things work. I'm a very curious human by nature. So, like, recently I've gotten into puzzling. <laughs> so I, like, that's my version of, like, a creative outlet. Yeah. So I think you just find whatever that thing is and hats off to Jake, like just surrounding yourself with humans that kind of foster it in you. Yeah. Well, what's interesting with magnetism is a lot of, especially having a business, we think that the funnels and the copywriting and the posting and the emails are going to be the thing and they support the thing. I love, we love the thing. We do the thing, but it's like the most obscured thing that is like your hobby or that you like is that is is the magnetic thing like one time I made a matcha and I recorded a story of me making a matcha and I was just like doing like a funny little cooking show this was a few months ago and I got so many comments like oh my gosh your commentary everything was so fun I felt so connected to you over a matcha and I also had a client hire me because in one one webinar, I said that I was I had immigrant parents. I said it very mm. quickly. I was like, oh, I grew up with immigrant parents. And she was like, oh, I feel so connected to you. Yeah. I have, I know you. So what are like those things that you've discovered about yourself and that you want people, I want people to hear this, that you, everything contributes to your success? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly what you're saying. It's those little moments where people can start to see themselves in your story. So you're asking, what are those things for me personally? Well, you were Pilates. Talk about like you're being a Pilates yeah. instructor, yeah. And an actress. Yeah. Did you go to Hollywood? Did you do the whole Hollywood thing? I did thing? the whole thing. So the the Cliff's Notes version where people can maybe find themselves in my story is that I went to school to be a theater major. I left after a year and moved to LA to audition. And then I had a lot, this was like way back in the day when those WB shows were really popular, like One Tree Hill and Dawson's Creek many moons ago. And all of those shows were being recorded in North Carolina and also in New Orleans because there was a lot of great tax incentives. So I moved to New Orleans and I was auditioning all the time, which was super random and great. And then I got swept off the map with Hurricane Katrina. Mm. So I... Like literally? Yeah. Yeah. Like I lost all my belongings. We evacuated in time. It was fine. But like literally had a backpack to my name. And I was 19. (laughs) And I, I didn't like LA, like LA just wasn't my thing. I'm like a sensitive little bunny. And everybody was like, can you be skinny enough? Can you be fake tan enough? And so I ran to New York city, which you should not do in the middle of winter time when you are cold and broke. And I was like, maybe I'll make it on Broadway when like singing is not my strong suit by any means. So that was a neat learning curve. And I think because I had so much of that, like, I hate to say negative programming that was happening from the body image space of the entertainment industry, that's what really fueled me to get into nutrition and Pilates and finding ways to like actually exercise as a way to love your body and not just like burn calories and try to get skinny. So I went down that whole path and the best advice I can give business owners, and maybe this is like the magnetism piece as well, is just say yes when you don't know any better. I was 25 when I opened up my Pilates studio. And I didn't know if that was hard. I didn't know if that was easy. I didn't, I just. To be 25 and to open a brick and mortar, like that is insane. And it's, it's book. insane. It's insane. Like yeah. who does, I mean, and so I always like to say to people, like if it, it, when you just don't know any better, you just do things. And, and especially if you're in your twenties and there's not that there's ever an age limit for anything, but at those younger age, like I didn't have kids. I didn't have a serious partnership. I could spend all the hours of the day, like pouring my heart into this thing, blood, sweat, and tears. 
And so I, I built up the studio. It was about four years later. I met my then husband who was from San Diego, California. So it made more sense for his work to cut for us to come back out West. So I sold my studio mm -hmm. and you have to that's when I met you. Yes. That's when I met you. And I grew up very low income. So when I sold my business at 29 years old for over six figures, I literally thought I had Oprah money. I was like, mm -hmm. I am the richest person on the planet. And without any kind of life financial wherewithal, I moved to San Diego, which is a very expensive area of the country. I tried to start another business, which is how I met your husband through another colleague. Mm -hmm. um, that business failed miserably. I like pumped like $10,000 into it of trying to like create my Pilates videos online. And then my ex-husband had a total mental breakdown and alcoholism and the whole thing. And so before you know it, this huge financial windfall, literally a year later, we were $80,000. Mm -hmm. And it like the true rock bottom, everything was a mess. And from there, I knew I wanted to work online. This was like in 2015, 16, way before the pandemic. But I didn't really know. And I had a friend that was doing a direct sales business and I really aligned with their like products and services. And I was like, all right, this is the thing. Let's, let's do it. Let's figure it out. I had never done sales. I was like, I don't want to be part of some pyramid scheme, but like, let's figure this thing out. And that really taught me a lot about entrepreneurship and personal growth and personal development, which ultimately led into like the coaching work that I do today, which is now entirely different. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's the close notes. Set. And then you were twins and then all the things and oh my gosh. Yeah. That's a lot. I didn't know about your the Hurricane Katrina. I didn't know about what like what that you went through that, which is interesting yeah. I have a water element thing too that happened as well. And it's right. Wild. Oh, Mother Nature is crazy, isn't it? I mean, that's what, yeah. If you if you are like resisting the signs of change, be careful where you live. You might just have like a huge natural disaster. <laughs> Okay, so there was a lot of change, a lot of sh different shifts and little little changes. During those changes, what tends to happen is the void, right? We have mm -hmm. that place of we're no longer who we were, but yeah. we're no longer who we are, who we want to be. So like we're yeah. in that in between. And I remember when you were going through your divorce, you were really sharing really vulnerably, vulnerably. I can never say mm -hmm. that vulnerably. You were really sharing about what you were going through and like it was it seemed like it was freaking tough and now that I've been through a little bit of a separation I went last year with my husband and then we got back together I feel like I went through like maybe 10 or 20 yeah. of what you went yeah. through but talk about like that a lot of women don't want to go through that it's that gap it's the I know can you talk Do you about know that? what is yes what is so i don't know masochistic or whatever the word is i was just having a talk with a girlfriend of mine who unfortunately is going through a separation right now and i was like gosh like what a gift to be in that space i mean don't get me wrong i have a very beautiful life that like has been all the things but i i truly missed that time there was like a year and a half of just deep healing and the thing is like when you go through something so traumatic whether it be a divorce or losing a loved one or maybe a bankruptcy or Something where you are just so stripped bare, you You're literally have nothing to prove. You have nothing to lose, nothing to prove. And you do get to just operate from this space of talk about what's the next best thing. Like you wake up every day and you're like, this is, I, I answer to nobody anymore. What is truly going to be the thing that's the most honest version of myself? Because for me, that was, that was to date the hardest thing I've ever gone through because I had never, we were talking a little bit about people pleasing before this. I, I really had a lot of my identity in my previous marriage. So I got to finally like step out and figure out who the heck I was at age 32. Mm -hmm. And that was really potent and really, really powerful. So it's, it's scary, but it's awesome. Like I miss that season so much. You're just so alive. You are so alive. <laughs> Well, what season are you in right now? Just like, oh, you're, you toddler, know, with the mama, kid, toddler, toddler mama, 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 yeah. mama, which is beautiful and it's its own thing, right? Yeah, you can't be going. I mean, it's it's quite challenging to go through an existential crisis when like kids are asking you, hey, can you feed me? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gives you that. 
Okay. So during, I love when I've heard someone say that that change, that transformation, it's like, you don't know which way's up and you don't know which way's down. So Correct. you can only connect with God. You can only connect yeah. with God. Yeah. The veil's really thin. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is when you're extremely magnetic, when things just come through, like the kind of Can you yeah. like, tell us like when something just like, oh, crazy opportunity came through? Like for me, Andrew and I were struggling with money and we were in Canada and we didn't have money for groceries. And I was like, it would be so nice to pay for these groceries. And I literally, and the money, the money is different colors in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I would walk to the grocery store and I, all of a sudden a gust of wind came by. I thought this was fake. I'm like the gust of wind, like Pocahontas. Yeah. And then just like money and it was brown, it was brown money. Money was just like flying towards me. And I'm like, oh, and I just grabbed it. And I'm like, yeah. And then walked into the grocery store. Stop it. <laughs> wow. Yes. I feel like that happened every day. You're absolutely right. So a couple examples would be one, I'm living in San Diego. I went from having money to having no money. And my, my job wasn't like, it was in a building phase. I was trying to start a new company. And so a friend of a friend connected me with this amazing lesbian couple, which I feel like everybody should live with a lesbian couple at some point in their life. It's magic. And they just so happened to say, like, they had this beautiful three-bedroom home. And they were like, you know, we, we trust this friend of a friend. Why don't you come check out our space and see if you, this is like a spot you want to kind of like land back on your feet. And then like have it be a transition period for you. And I showed up and they had this like big scaping backyard that mm -hmm. overlooked the whole city. And I felt so safe. I felt so protected. Mm -hmm. Those two women are like some of my family to this day. So having that place to live that just like appeared out of nowhere, that was completely affordable for me at that time. And then the other piece that was always very funny to me was it was on a canyon and every night I would drive home from work and there would be all of these little canyon buddies, bunnies that would cross the street every night before I came home. And bunnies are like a big sign of creation and rebirth. And, and so it was just like this omen of like, you're on the right track, you're on the right track, you're on the right track. Another thing that was really interesting as far as money goes is like I said, like I didn't, I didn't come from money. I never like could call up my parents and say like, Hey, can I borrow some money? And I remember you and I have like this intuitive healer in common and she did a reading for me and she was like, Hey, I just want to let you know, like you have pretty good financial windfall coming your way. And I was like, Oh, ha ha. That's, that's nice. And she's like, no, like pretty soon. And within two days I had a random family member that was like, Hey, I'm trying to get some tax write-offs this year. Here's a check for $14,000. And I was like, mm. what? Mm -hmm. What? So that was like pretty, pretty magical at the time. But yeah, like little job opportunities, like even just hearing about like a recommendation for a sound bath that was at like a cute little yoga studio that really was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing what can happen when, because like people don't know this about you, but you're very woo-woo. Very woo. Yeah. Like you're extremely, I th sometimes I think you're a little bit more woo-woo than me because like, really? you know all the, all the, the top hot things before I know them. Oh. Oh, yeah. If I think that this, this was big for me with the kid thing, because I truly felt like I like, I don't want to say operate in another dimension. That sounds so like whatever it sounds like, but I was constantly searching for like whatever these, I didn't really want to participate here at earth school. Mm -hmm. I was like, it just seems so much more magical in whatever else is going on in the ethos. Yeah. And that's probably yeah. why Burning Man is so good for you because it is yeah. a place for you to go for a literally a week where yeah. you just disconnect and you play yeah. in the Lulu land. Yeah. 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 Okay. So manifesting money, manifesting places to live with the mama bears mm -hmm. and just being there with, with your community, with your support through really like, really, like you yeah. said, really, really tough, crazy times. And what I would even like maybe add to that for your people thing is if you are on the brink of going through a hard time and you're like, wait a minute, I don't have this amazing community because you, you need community if you're going to go through something major. And when I say community, it might just be one human. You don't need to have like a whole sorority of people, but you do need at least that one person that's going to like hold your hand and say, I've been here before. You're not going to die. And if you are concerned that you're about to go on this major life transition and you don't have that person. I promise with every fiber of my being, if you take that leap into the void, as you said, that person will appear. Like that person mm. just always appears. In yes. Way. Yes. You I might just... not know who they are, like, but that person's going to appear. When we were in Canada, 
and Andrew and I were in a really tough spot. Uh, he was about to leave his company. There was a lot of ego death. And I was on Facebook and I was in a new area, new community. I was in Victoria, Canada, and I was trying to find something fun to do, something for me to woo woo spiritual for me to do. And I went to Facebook events because that's how you like find events, right? Yeah. Go and like find an event. And my finger slipped. My finger went like this. And I, I, but I think something like spirit like pushed it of course. or something. And then I clicked and I was like, ooh, I really resonate with this person. And then I ended up hiring her, working with her privately. She was a shamanic healer. She worked with Andrew. We had like these crazy experiences with her when I was like, oh, I just actually got that gentle nudge, that finger nudge. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, I mean, don't worry. That person will come. I mean, mm -hmm. I had a friend that like went through a divorce one year before me and I, I always call her like my divorce Sherpa. She like held my hand the whole way up the mountain and was like, come on, sis, we got to make it to base camp. <laughs> oh, oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. That's really sweet. Well, with, okay, so the identities that you mm. had in the past and then you had the past with your past relationship, right? Yep. You had this identity with, with this per person and you... And then you leaped to this next identity. What did that look like for you? Did it look like a big quantum leap? Did it look like a massive growth? Like, cause you were, mm. you mentioned you were really codependent with this person. Yeah. That particular transition. Yes. It did feel like a big quantum leap. He, and the reason I say that is because it was literally, I think a matter of six months. I remember a girlfriend of mine who was in recovery, I she was like, do you want to just like sit in on an AA meeting with me to kind of see if you think that maybe your ex-husband might exhibit some of these signs? And I was like, yeah, it's good. I mean, I know he's got a drinking problem, but like, you know, you just don't, as, as like a spouse, you just don't really want to confront that. And I remember sitting at this meeting and it was a very intimate meeting. And so as a guest, you don't normally speak, but there was only 10. And I was like, let me just share a little bit why I'm here. And I said, my, my husband, like, he drinks a bottle of vodka every single day and he usually finishes his last drink around 6 a.m and then crawls into bed and doesn't get out of bed until 2 p.m and he hasn't held employment in the past year like very matter of fact as if this was like a normal occurrence and i remember looking around the circle and all of their eyes looked back at me all recovering um alcoholics and i i had this like jolt in my body I looked at all of their eyes and they just looked back at me like oh oh no like mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. this is not okay and I remember walking out of that meeting and one of my friends friend this he came up to me and he said so when are you gonna leave him and I was like oh my god he I was like he's my soulmate we're married I never leave him what are you crazy he goes the sooner you leave him the sooner he'll get better because mm. right now he's not experiencing any consequences and that's a big thing in the in the recovery community and I thought, well, so we're just going to start with some couples counseling and just like see how it goes. And like, so in La La Land, by the third session of couples counseling, I said to my then husband, I was like, listen, my opening offer is six months inpatient. And I walked out the door that day and I never came back because mm. I honestly thought, I thought he was going to be like, hey, how about I do like a three day juice cleanse and we'll call it even. And I probably would have said yes. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest gifts, and I can see this now from like a, a God universe protection thing. One of the biggest gifts that he gave me was so many people who struggle with partners that do struggle with addiction is that roller coaster of like sober relapse, sober relapse. Like that's a very common occurrence that happens when you deal with addiction. And the biggest gift he gave me was he's like, I don't have a problem. I'm absolutely not entertaining the thought of, of not drinking. So it wow. really drew the line in the sand and I had to wake up the next day as a different person. Oof. Yeah. So that grief. Oh my yeah. God. Oh yeah. It was, it was like pretty, you're like, it, it fucking sucks. It was <laughs> terrible. It was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it was like nothing I'd ever experienced before, but wow, well, here we are. Well, now you have this offer, you have offers of like life makeover and you're just like, you're, you talk, let's talk about a little about your life coaching. Cause I swear I do not. I have to have friends, and you're one of my friends, but I have to have friends and people in my community that have gone through dark nights of the soul. Like, if you haven't been through a dark night of the soul, I don't want you in my life. And, like, I know. Sounds really on an intimate level. Like, I just don't really know how to 
yeah. how to connect on an intimate level. Correct? On an intimate level. And I've met yeah. people who haven't had it and they're like, oh my gosh, my life's great. Everything's good. Like, or maybe that's the facade that they're putting out there. Yeah. And I'm just like, I can't resonate with you. I can't connect. Mm. Nothing Scorpio in me. I need the darkness. I need the depth. Yeah. I need to feel you. Right? Yes. Yeah. I just need the depth of it. But yes, I need that connection of having like friends with dark night of souls. And I feel like mm-hmm. you had a snowball of them. Yeah. Quickly. Yep. Yep. So a year after that, my mom passed away unexpectedly. Mm-hmm. I was in financial ruin. The whole thing. Glennon Doyle, though, says the more you have a backlog of, of doing the work, if you will, like the, you get like a backlog of luck. So I do feel like all of those things, if you feel like you just keep getting like hit and hit and hit, if you keep like doing the work and like focusing on your healing on the transition, I promise there is a backlog of luck that will show up. Yeah. Kind of like what you're saying with those, like that Canadian money exchange. Yeah. And like you, you have, so you had all these like backlog of things like divorce, Mm -hmm. financial ruin, nowhere to live, all the things like boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it keeps it like it humbles you in such a way that your mm-hmm. heart is just open you're like a little puppy like oh yes pick yeah. Me up. yeah yeah and the universe is like yeah i want to pick you up i want to help you i want to guide mm-hmm. you i want to i want and then you like let's talk about the things that because i know maybe you're better at it now because i've coached you but like yeah. celebrating like the successes like what has happened oh yeah yeah this, yes so much good stuff on the other side and it's interesting is I, like you, feel that I could only connect to people who have had, like, major trauma. And it's and it's trauma. an interesting space to be in, not just as a parent, but I, my hope, like, for our, our world is that people do get to evolve without so much trauma. And it's a very tricky thing raising children because I know that the way, the quickest way to, not the quickest, the most effective way for humans to develop compassion curiosity, intent, like integrity, all of these, these characteristics that we can admire in humans, the quickest way to do that is adversity. And that's the most effective. And as a parent, that's a really hard pill to swallow because all you want to do is protect your children from all the horrific things that you've gone through. And what I, what has been the biggest blessing is in my partnership with Jake, is that he grew up, he grew up in a Scandinavian culture where he didn't have any trauma for all intents and purposes, right? Like we all have stuff, but collectively speaking, there there's a really high quality of life over there. They have incredible education. They have incredible- I you're telling me that. You're like, yeah. You're like, it's clean. He's got- I know. He's got a clean slate. There's nothing yeah. else ever. Yeah, yeah. And I, at first I was like, how am I going to relate to this guy? Huh. But now it's been like a really beautiful illustration of what's possible. It's like he's like an expander in that way. Just like you would admire somebody with financial success or business success. Like I admire and I, it's a, it's an expansion for me to see that it is actually possible that the work that we are all doing, whether you choose to have children or not, like the impact of your relationships does get to ripple forward that way. Mm -hmm. That I know my kids are going to go through hard stuff, but I sure like I, I pray to all things holy that like we are laying foundations to where they can ascend above some of the other stuff yeah yeah well with your recent twin addition yeah yeah how do you feel like they have influenced your identity and magnetism yeah yeah they this is the most ground you said i was grounded this is the most grounded i've ever felt because of the immediacy x part of it so jake and i had a conversation of whether or not we were going to do the kid thing i when i was previously married i tried to get pregnant i couldn't infertility the whole thing i honestly think god was like sis i'm i'm really trying to throw you a bone here trying to help out this is not the person we're supposed this to isn't the like, guy for you i've been raising spirit babies and yeah yes so thank god that didn't happen but so i went through infertility and i didn't really know how i felt about the kid thing after that and we're in our 30s and jake had a lot of independence as well and so I asked him, why do you or don't you want kids? And I said, I would hope you'd turn that question around on me. Because at this point in time, I was like, okay, I think I really do. Like, I do see that as a part of my life path here. And I know there's a lot of different answers to this question. And I don't think mine is the right one. But for me, the reason I chose to want to do the kid thing was it felt like if I didn't, 
and I know this isn't for everybody, but if I feel like I didn't, I wouldn't experience the full spectrum of the human experience. So that was really important to me. I also have a cancer rising. Like I was meant to be a mom. It's just like, yeah, it, was, it was written. It was written in the, in the stars, if you will. And what's great is having them here with me. Like I, I do experience so much immediacy. And people are like, you just need to be present. You just, if you want to be present, you have some kiddos. Um, the, a big gift, if anybody's an entrepreneur here, what I would love to encourage is that I think so many women, especially who own their own businesses or are solopreneurs or freelancers, are terrified of having kids because that means like we don't have benefits and maternity leave and all of those fancy things that corporate jobs have. And what I would say is my, I am working so much less. I am making so much more money than I am with kids. Mm. But now that I have kids, because it takes out all of that fluffy nonsense that you're trying to fill your day with that you think is like going to get you more business or more income. That really is just fluff if you work. So the minute I cut all of that out, I mean, last year was the big experiment. Last year, I shifted my business to trying to build it through in-person networking events via instead of just online and social media. So I'd go to two networking events a week, which were some people were like, oh my God, that's so much. In reality, it's like a two hour event with some drive time. I maybe worked six hours a week. Mm -hmm. And my whole thing was including clients. I want to work part-time hours, which to me means approximately 20 hours. And I want to make six figures with my two kids at home because we do part-time childcare and then I'm home with them the rest of the day. And I did it. And I had never done that without kids. So talk about magnetism. And you even said this to me at one point that babies bring prosperity. Mm -hmm. They yeah. just do. Yeah. Babies bring abundance. Yeah. And I, I felt like these babies really, I mean, we didn't know that they were babies at the time. We thought oh. it was a baby, but <laughs> yeah. These babies, like they wanted to come in and they were, yeah. they were, they were such a gift. And I do firmly believe that babies are bringing that bring abundance. And I actually mm -hmm. been on my own journey of yeah. spirit babies and I'm trying to have a baby right now and not trying, I'm allowing it to happen. Yes. Right. I knew that these two babies, they definitely wanted to come in. We didn't know at the time that they were going to be two babies. We knew it was just going to be one. Right. Right. But this abundance that I firmly believe that babies bring abundance. And I've been on my own journey right now with allowing a baby to come in and welcoming mm -hmm. a baby to come up, come in is it's going to bring me abundance. It's actually bringing me boundaries yes. and self-worth. Yes. Yes. And even in my partner, even in my husband, he's like, oh, I'm not showing up for less than this anymore. I've got another mouth to feed. It's, right. It, it, there's like a maturity. There's a level. There's a... I don't know, the self-worth. I didn't expect that the babies were going to, I didn't expect that this baby was going to help my confidence. And right. Yes. If you had told 20, 25 year old me that like, I would feel more confident and honestly, like more sexy in my own skin post babies, I'd be like, what? Like, I thought you just got pregnant and you like were washed away from the world at that point. Like if you'd asked 25 year old me mm -hmm. and the level of magnetism is next level if you yeah. let it yeah and and if we talk about magnetism like and then this is kind of like i don't want to say my bread and butter because it's the unsexy side of what i do with coaching is that i'm such a big believer in the daily habits mm -hmm. i just am you've got to pick like i don't know two to three things as it relates to your physiology we just talked about how you have to like do earth school you've got to participate in this physical realm so if that's the case you need a body and a mind to do that yeah and you've got to pick your like two to three things that aren't you like don't sign up for 75 hard say like i'm gonna work out 30 minutes for five times a week and have that be your gold standard and if you do that that's honestly how i've made these like quote unquote quantum leap not like is because i've said i'm going to prioritize moving my body i'm going to prioritize something for my mind like some some seasons of life it looks like I'm reading 10 pages a day of some things. Other mm -hmm. times it's like I dig into an audio book because I don't have time to read, but you've got to do something mentally daily that really, that's where like the magnet, because the universe wants to see you're serious. Yeah. It's like, it I'll does. show you the magic. I just want to make sure that you're trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I always say this to Andrew that our biggest quantum leaps recently is actually us hitting 10,000 steps every day. 
We do this every day. We go, we go get our step. We call them steps. Yes. We go, let's go get our steppies. Steffies for steppies. And I don't know why I just like calling it steppies. It's cuter that yeah. way. Yeah. And I'm just, by hitting that, I know that I'm doing a lot of things. One, yes. I'm helping with my mental clarity. I'm, help, I'm getting ideas. I'm moving my body. I'm getting vitamin D. Like there's just like, I'm listening to a podcast or I'm not mm -hmm. listening to anything. I'm just thinking of my thoughts. And it's incredible what those little things can do. So with, with magnetism, with what you're doing, what are you creating with your clients right now? Like what is the focus? What are the transformations that you're seeing? What's the makeover? What's the... Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm currently working with women entrepreneurs because that's all I've ever known and done and trained and all the things. So that's my niche, if you will. And I would say, I like to say creative entrepreneurs. And who that really means is I work with a lot of, say, like digital marketers, website developers, copywriters, people in the health and wellness space that are selling their services. I have a couple of network marketers. And the whole purpose is we, I, maybe once again, it's the Libra me, but I will always do equal parts strategy. So like if we work together, you're going to get how to do a sales script call, how to overcome objections, like truly all the selling stuff that I wish I had known 10 years ago, because mm -hmm. I'm somebody who's very conflict avoidant. And it would have been helpful if someone taught me how to do a sales call. <laughs> then I could actually bring in more business. Mm -hmm. So you'll get all this sales strategy, how to go to networking events, what networking events are happening in your town, what, how to have like proper follow-up hygiene. But then I have, so I have the population that truly just like doesn't know the strategy side. And that's like, yes, this is like changing my world. Then I have the other population that's like, I'm going to 45 networking events a year. Or I'm posting on social media every single day without fail. Why aren't I getting business? And that's where there's a disconnect on the life side. That's where there's some sort of limiting belief. That's where you're not getting your 10,000 steppies in a day that's helping. Like there's something else under the hood that we've got to go deeper on. Mm. So I usually work with clients for anywhere from six to 12 months. And we have a great little mastermind where when we come together, you learn so much more. Everything's magnified this from being in group containers when you can like see your blind spots through other people. Mm -hmm. And, and then they all refer business to each other. So it's a great, great little community. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I love, I, what are you calling it now? Or It's the Abundant Artist Mastermind. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I love it. Yeah. Like the artist way kind of. Yeah, kind of, yeah, 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 exactly. Like you don't have to be a visual artist or a theater kid. Like your artistry could be that you make digital products or that you, it doesn't have to. Yeah. We have everybody under the sun in there. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like you give them the practical sales tools, strategies, but you also give them the soul and like you teach yeah, them how to connect. I hope so. That's where my heart is. It's, I don't know anybody in the coaching world and there's like, you sell them on what they want and you give them what they need. Like I'll teach you sales stuff all day. That's fine. But like, I hope that you walk away with like a so much richer palette of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, I loved this. This felt really um, good. I got a little, thank you for a little part of it, which is great. Yeah. Oh, God. Thanks for having me. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully these are like, whenever you listen to other people's guests on podcasts and you're like, what did they even, so I hope there was something that was transferable. Yeah, the the big the cliff notes, if you made it this far, is that if you're going through something hard, leap and your support person will show up, do your 10,000 steppies or find your version of that. Yes. And like, honestly, it all just works out. Mm -hmm. It just does. Mm -hmm. It always works out. And there's always going to be some type of lifeline. There's going to be some type of support. You just got to look for it. Mm -hmm. You got to be open for it. And especially if you sign up to be an entrepreneur especially right. you're going to get more of those you're, yeah. si you're signed up for double double the yeah. level oh, yeah. yeah well where can people find you what are you selling right now what's going on in your world what's going on how about they send me a little dm say hi i'm on i'm lauren page dot says on ig my website is lauren-page.com and i usually take two to three people into the mastermind each month so if you feel like something is calling you to get coached right now, my sweet spot is really helping women entrepreneurs get from that kind of like five to 10K mark in their business, then this is probably a good fit for you. Good. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being on the Magnetic Online Leader podcast. I love you so much. Mwah. Mwah. Peace. Bye.